Today we're going to be building a linen press or a low cabinet for bathroom. It's going to hold towels and washcloths and robes and things like that. So if you want to see how I built it, stick around. Okay, so before we move on and start cutting the shape out of these legs here on the bandsaw, I just want to address a couple of things and explain to you why I did what I did so you understand what's coming. On the one side, you saw me cut two inch wide pieces, okay? So these are going to be on the face of every side of the box, right, of this litter press. So that's two inches. Then you saw me cut a bunch of pieces at one and a quarter. And the reason for that was those are going to, when added to the three quarter inch material, make two inches. So now you have two inches on one side, two inches on the other, and it's even all around. Then on the inside of the leg, you saw me after I drew out these gentle curves here that are gonna be cut on the bandsaw, you saw me cut these little blocks, three inches, one and a quarter wide by one and a quarter wide. When it's sitting here like this, when the plywood panels go in to make up the box, those are gonna get put inside here. Now they also have a cradle and become a recessed panel. So it's gonna be a lot easier to put that together and support the bottom as well.
Okay, so I stood the cabinet up. Now, you remember when we made the legs and I made that little extra block there as I made the curve and then I told you it was gonna be a little cradle? Well, that's what's gonna happen here. This is gonna support the weight of the cabinet bottom, but also hook on there and on the tack in place, glue it up and then screw it in from the inside and that'll not only cradle it, but it'll give it the, the look of a face frame with the curved leg on both sides. All right guys, so now that the carcass of the cabinet and the legs are assembled, I still have to do some trimmings here on the side. We're gonna put some rails across and it's gonna match this. So what I'm gonna do now is cut the adjustable shelves, but to cut the shelves, I need to measure the inside. Now you've seen me take two sticks before and put them like that and you know, to side to side, clamp it together and then measure the outside of the sticks and that gives me the inside. But you know, I got this old school carpenter's ruler here. This thing's probably, uh, this is my grandfather's, so probably about uh, anywhere between 45 and 50 years old, maybe more. And I'm going to open it up like this. I'm gonna put it against one side here and it has this little extension piece. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it, but that piece pops up right there. And what that's gonna do is allow me to hit that wall and I can see the inside. Okay, so that's an extra two inches. So it's 27 inches. So what I'm gonna do is take off an eight, uh, maybe a little bit of a 16th of an inch. So I'm gonna cut the shelf, um, the length of the shelf. I'm gonna make 26 and a light cut on 15 sixteenths. And then for the front here, I'm gonna make it a light cut on 15. So we got 26 and 15 16 light by 15 light.
we have some, they want brushed nickel. So what I did was I got some silver hinges and what I did was hit them with a scotch right, and now they look like exactly the brushed nickel that they want. They picked out the handles. They were also like a brushed nickel finish and they're, you know, pretty long. They'll be mounted right here somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna be installing magnets so that the doors close and they stay closed. The other thing is I removed the glass because uh, for the paint job, I don't wanna have to tape everything off and it'd just be a lot easier, you know, because I'm gonna be spraying both sides of the door also. Um, but like I said about the hinges, I didn't install them yet in this video. I'll install them in the next video. This way you can see how everything works is because I have a certain reveal already for the hinges. Now, they're gonna have to be mortised a little bit, but what I'm anticipating is because this is gonna be a waterborne finish and there's gonna be so many layers of the milk paint that I'm gonna be using and there's gonna be some clear finish also, I'm anticipating some swelling in the wood. It's gonna absorb that water, it's gonna expand a little bit, and also the thickness of the layers of the paint are gonna give me, you know, maybe a little less than a 16th of an inch, maybe like a, a 64th or even a 32nd of an inch of a film. So once that's all said and done, then I'll come in and I'll mount the doors to the hinges so that I can mortise the correct depth because I wanna maintain at least a 16th of an inch gap reveal all the way around. The inset doors are very tricky. So that's what we're gonna do before um, we hang the doors. We'll do the paint job and that'll be in the second video and I'll hang the doors there. Okay, so that's the first part of the build. That's the completion of the whole cabinet and the top and the glass panel doors and everything, raised legs. Now, the second video is gonna be the paint job on it. It's gonna be a distressed white and the, I'm gonna be using milk paint and it's like a four part process. So. I think that's gonna be a little lengthy and I don't want the video to get too long, so I'm gonna stop it here with just the completion of the build and the very next video will be part two. That'll be the, the actual distressed paint job. So stick around for that. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you do so, click that subscribe button. And also there's a picture of a notification bell. If you hit that notification bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video. And when I'm finished with the second part of the video, <clears throat> what I'll do is go back and I will link the paint job process for the distressed white uh, to the bottom of this video. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time in my shop.